The Hills Have Eyes movie review. Action. So The Hills Have Eyes, written and directed by Alexander Aja. Or Aha, maybe. This movie is a different take on the original 1977 by Wes Craven. And this movie is produced by Wes Craven. And he went on to write the sequel to this movie within like a year after this this movie, which came out in 2006. This movie is about a family that is on their 25th anniversary. The mom and dad, and they take their daughter, their other daughter, their son, and their daughter's baby, and the daughter's husband. So we got the brother-in-law, and he's... Not he has he has an interesting relationship with the dad. The dad's a hardcore like, you know, gun wielding Republican. The dad the brother in law is a liberal who hates guns, which is an interesting concept. It's always interesting to see two people of different political parties in the movie kind of bickering, especially in a horror movie. That's kind of different, and it's especially funny because you know at some point the liberal gun hating person is gonna have to use a gun to save his own skin at some point, and he does, which is comical. But that's not really play for laughs in this movie. Like it's not like supposed to be funny you just kind of pick up on it like oh he didn't like guns but now he's using them but they're on this trip through the new mexico desert to try to get to san francisco and on the way there they stop at a gas station where the gas clerk tells them there's a road a couple miles down and if you take it it's going to save you two hours to your trip so like any rational human being they take that road and they crash their car because they run over spikes that flattens all their tires and for some reason they never really ask questions about it they just kind of look at the damage of the hood like hmm the hood's fucked up. Yeah, well, all tires are fucked up, too. Isn't that kind of weird? It's one thing to pop a tire, but to have all four tires of your car and have every single tire of your trailer that you're hitching also all pop at the same time, that's not a coincidence. But anyways, one by one, they're getting attacked by the mutants that live there. And the opening credits to this movie give you the exposition about where these mutants came from, like what happened. There was nuclear testing from 1945 to 1962 in the New Mexico desert. And they told these miners to get out, but they wouldn't leave their homes because they're stubborn sons of bitches like the Sawyer family or the Hewitt family in the Texas Chainsaw. They didn't leave, so they stuck around so they could become mutant monsters. And now they blame the U.S. government and anybody who walks through. And then unexplicably just became cannibals because fuck it. But I'm not saying that's a con. That's just what, that's just the reason behind their motivation. They became mutants and now they want to eat people. But the gas station clerk guy, he's like the victim recruiter. He sends people their way knowing they're going to get killed. He recruits people. Maybe that's like how they why he's still alive they're like all right we'll keep you alive if you send us victims every now and then and at the beginning and he's an alcoholic because of it he's got beer bottles everywhere and as decoration in front of the gas station you can tell that it's starting to weigh him down emotionally and psychologically which i found that to be interesting the fact that this guy actually does become remorseful for the shit he's been doing and he says i'm not doing it no more but then he does do it because apparently when the woman walks in she sees this purse that's filled with all kinds of stuff that he shouldn't have. So therefore, it's kind of like a red... Just kind of a red flag to the girl, but she doesn't say anything about it. But I bet he was like, she's going to rat me out to the police or something because this doesn't belong here. So therefore, he's like, I'm going to send him another batch of victims. Fuck it. I'll do it one more time. Now, let's talk about the score of this movie. This score sets the right tone. I mean, it is a badass score. I don't even know what the instrument is, but it is just a very intense, like, deep guitar horn or something i have no idea what it is but it sounds awesome and this movie opens up like i said explaining what's going on and while it's explaining it has all these nuclear images explosions over a song that if you listen to it on its own it probably wouldn't be creepy but just all the images combined with the song it definitely makes you feel weirded out probably one of the best scenes in this movie the most intense scene is the trailer scene that's the scene that pays homage to the original with the rape scene, but they add like a breastfeeding part. Like I said, this movie goes places. There's rape in this movie. It's not like the ha last house on the left type of uncomfortableness. It's not like deliverance or anything. You don't really see much, but it's definitely a rape scene. So therefore it's kind of uncomfortable. So beware who you watch this movie with. Just keep that in mind. But that is definitely probably one of the best scenes in this movie. It definitely builds the most tension. It is after that moment, it just doesn't stop. It's constant terror from that moment on. One of the mutants in this movie is, like I said, the teenage girl who has, I feel like, this one moment where she has practical effects. And then, like I said, towards the end, it's like they just use CGI to deform her face. But interesting fact, she was played by Laura Ortiz, who ended up being in Victor Crowley. Well, not, not too good movie. But she's like the one mutant that is actually trying to help out this family. She doesn't want to be a cannibal, I guess. She's, she doesn't believe in what all her mutant friends are doing. So that's another interesting aspect in this movie to know that even if you are a mutant, there is still some good in people. Another interesting fact about this movie 
you don't really get a movie where more bad guys die than good guys. You know, you got like the family of six and only like four, three or four people die, but like five or six bad guys die. So it's like, this movie is more about slaughtering the bad guys than the good guys. I think the whole like nuclear testing ground that the one character ends up going to to find his baby because they kidnapped the baby after that whole trailer scene, which is brutal, like I said. He goes to this nuclear test site and all these mannequins are around. So this plays to people with manne mannequin phobias. So this movie play it has a lot of stuff in it. Very creepy. Scorpions walking around. They have like this whole like junkyard of cars from like the 40s, 50s, and 60s, 70s. Telling you that these people have been f fucking shit up for like decades. Which adds an extra sense of eeriness and like holy crap these people are unstoppable. Because they've been doing it for decades. It just adds a lot more fear to the audience when they're watching this when they see how long this family's been doing it and how fucking strong they are too. An interesting aspect about this movie is that it's all a family. Like they're all loving. They get, I mean, they, they hate each other in some aspects, but it's like a family that just kind of fights, but it's so relatable the way these characters were written. Especially relatable to me because I have a brother-in-law who, you know, doesn't get along with the the siblings but this movie is not afraid to go places like they literally stick a gun in a baby's face and i'm not sure if it was a real or fake gun on set it probably was real and there's one scene where they're pointing a the gun at the baby's face and you could tell the baby was like grabbing at it like it was a toy but this movie goes there it does not shy away this movie is very brutal it mixes cgi and practical effects especially with the mutants like the the men mutants are not cgi but the woman like there's, there's a little girl and then there's the the teenage girl, they have CGI. Like, they do the whole, like, three-dot system where they put three dots on your face behind the scenes and they use CGI effects to make them look all fucked up. And you could just tell when it was CGI and when it was practical effects. Sometimes the practical effects in certain scenes and certain lighting would make it look more rubbery. But in other situations, it did look frightening. They did a good job making these mutants. But one of these mutants didn't look mutant at all. There's the one who eats the heart he's got the very long hair and apparently he's a ventriloquist because there's a scene where big bob he's shooting his gun like an idiot yeah so much for a licensed carrier he says just shooting all four four of his six bullets at nowhere which is one of those scenes in movies that just pisses you off you're like why is this idiot shooting literally nothing but he's hearing somebody say daddy like 50 times and it, like it sounds like it's coming from the left and the right and he's in the middle of nowhere and then he gets in his car and the person who was saying daddy the whole time was in his back seat inside his car which means that's some ventriloquism shit right there this movie opens up also with a few deaths that happen very quick and very choppy with pluto the big motherfucker with his pickaxe and they the sound design was kind of cheesy or just it didn't sound right and they kept reusing the same noise every hit like just over and over again it sounded like they just kind of just copy and paste it, some kind of sound design. Ping, ping, ping. In the editing process, they decide to show you that Pluto's face, he's the main mutant. The first time you really see his face is when he's in the trailer about to um, attack the girl sleeping. And they show his face as he's looking at her, unconscious, sleeping. And then she wakes up and then she sees him and it's a close-up shot of his face. I feel like that shot right there should have been the first look from the audience was her POV shot of him, not... Just a random shot of him looking down at her while she was sleeping. And then a second time when she woke up. I feel like that when she woke up, that should have been our first look at the monster. Because that would have been more scary if we didn't already know what he looked like. Just a little interesting fact. This movie is based in New Mexico, but guess where it was shot? Morocco. And also a warning, a dog dies in this movie. So if you're sensitive to dogs dying, don't watch this movie. But yeah, this is another great remake. We had a lot of remakes in the 2000s. And this one is definitely a top 5 horror remakes along with Texas Chainsaw and Evil Dead, and Dawn of the Dead. This one's definitely up there. So therefore, when it comes to The Hills Have Eyes, I definitely recommend, if you are a horror fan, or someone who wants to just get scared, that you go out and buy it. The Mr. Hat Award will go to Pluto, the mutant. That's right, not a victim, the bad guy. After getting stabbed in the foot with a screwdriver, he gets a flagpole right through his throat and then an axe to the face. Suck it, Pluto. And the Mr. Twig Award will go to the mother who got shot in the chest, and then eventually eaten, but that's a sad death, but it was also lame, let's admit it. Those are my thoughts on The Hills Have Eyes. Let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments below. And as always, if you want to see more fantastical awesome content, you can do so by clicking on my cartoon circular face in five seconds. And until next time, I'll feed you some.